What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, back with the post-game Giants video. No victory scotch today. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This was a very rough game. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you could do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you ring the bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are in the description. I will follow you back. As high as you've been the last four weeks, especially coming off the big win in Seattle, this is about as low as it gets. This is the worst game the New York Giants have played since the game against San Francisco. I don't know what it is about NFC West teams coming into our house and just killing us, but that is what happened today. There's plenty of blame to go around in this game. We got absolutely mollywopped, destroyed, taken to the woodshed. We got embarrassed by a better team, plain and simple. We lost in every single facet of this game, offense, defense, special teams, it was ugly throughout. It was ugly early, and the Giants never got off the ropes. The Cardinals continued to land body blows and pretty much landed a haymaker uh, at the beginning of the third quarter. I'm going to say this. I'm a huge Joe Judge fan. Chris and I talked about this. It's the first mistake Joe Judge made. Daniel Jones was not 100% healthy. He did not belong in the game. I don't care if Daniel Jones says he's 100% healthy as a head coach. You need to make that decision and say, I'm not seeing it from him. Now, Daniel Jones was 100% healthy going into this game and he played like that. That's really inexcusable. Listen, you guys know my feelings on Daniel Jones. I'm not the biggest. I, I, I root for Daniel Jones extremely. I want him to succeed. I mean, I'm a Giants fan. He's our quarterback. He's going to be our quarterback next year. Guys calling for Colt McCoy. No matter. Colt McCoy is not the future of the Giants. Colt McCoy is not better than Daniel Jones when he's healthy. He's not. It's just plain and simple. He's not. But Daniel Jones doesn't show me a lot of like you know, take a tiger by the tail type of thing. He doesn't, he, he doesn't, he don't look like a winner. He don't have that mentality. I mean, like Eli was very ho-hummish, but Eli had the heart of a lion. Like Eli, you know, he, he would make plays when he had to. Daniel Jones doesn't give off that vibe to me. Daniel Jones doesn't give off the vibe of a winner. Daniel Jones comes off as timid and scared. Now maybe his hamstring had something to do with that today, but he fumbled three damn times today. Okay. That's inexcusable. Three times. He, you know, the first one, okay, I kind of gave me an excuse for that. Golden came off the blind side and lit him up. He fumbled the ball. But the next two times, just that can't happen. He's, he's, I don't want to say, man, he's, he's got to do better. Plain and If the Giants are ever going to be a serious contender, Daniel Jones has to do way better, way better. I complained about it all year. His pocket awareness stinks. His decision-making stinks. That's not something you can teach. I think his talent's good enough to play in the NFL. But in between the years, he's not good. He was terrible today. No excuse Really, really bad. Starts with him, in my opinion. Really bad. We started off, you know, the drive. We had a couple first downs. He fumbles the ball. Marcus Golden gets it all the way to the seven. Our defense did a great job of shutting him out of the end zone, but inevitably the field position flipped, and we couldn't really do much after that, okay? Uh, the turnovers were deadly. The turnover by Deion Lewis was horrible. Defense had been doing everything they could. We were down 6 nothing. We just need a good drive to get back in the game. Deion Lewis fumbles the kickoff. They go right down, score. It's 13 to nothing. You saw Kyler Murray on that touchdown throw show what a winning quarterback does. The guy's getting pressured by four guys. Throws it off his back foot, throws a great pass in the tight end, goes up and makes a play. That's, that's how you win games. You saw that, Kyler Murray. That, that's what a winning quarterback does. We don't see that from Deion Jones. Plain and simple. Offensive line, disgraceful today. They allowed eight or nine sacks. How do you do that? How do you allow that many sacks? Andrew Thomas looked like he was a rookie. Like, yeah, he is a rookie, but he looked like his first game out. They were completely lost. I don't know what happened to the offensive line. It's been so good. But I actually, I have a theory on why the offensive line was so bad today. And it's going to go back to Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett did a horrendous job of play calling today. Didn't understand it. The Giants played the game ass backwards. They started trying to run when they were down by 20 points as opposed to running to begin the game. Especially if Daniel Jones is 100%. You've won by running the ball last four games. Why did we get away from it? I don't understand it. I do not get it. But I think that the offensive line gets in a bit of a rhythm when they run block and they get their legs underneath them and they, they start playing a lot better. Today, you ask them to defend early and often, and they got killed. They never had a rhythm. They never ran the ball. It doesn't make any sense. Giants averaged five yards to carry, but they never made a commitment to running the ball. And I don't understand this. Seven straight games, they'd run the ball over 100 yards, and they'd been in the seven straight games. And today, they didn't run the ball barely at all. They got killed. I don't understand that at all. I don't get it, okay? Um, Evan Ingram, he was nowhere to be found. I don't know how much of that was on Daniel Jones. I don't know how much it was on the wide receivers. All I know is that this is the worst game they played since they played the 49ers. There, there's no doubt about that. Okay. Now, Giants fans, I get it. I said this in the stream. 
you're upset, you should be. The only reason we're as upset as we are in this game is because we had one four straight. We're able to beat Seattle with a backup quarterback, figuring that we could beat the Cardinals. I also thought we could beat the Cardinals, and I was very wrong about that. They match up well with us, and they kicked our ass, and it's really all it equates to. But I didn't think we'd blow them out. I thought we'd win a tough, close game. I thought they'd fight. They'd done that all year. They didn't have it. Arizona took it to us. They took the fight out of us early. Like I said, the two early turnovers really, really hurt us. And a lot of that has to do with the offense just being really poor. They put the defense in a bad position. And the defense really just had a hard time recovering. They did what they could. They held us in there for as long as they could. But inevitably, when you can't run and can't extend drives, you're 0 for 5 and third downs to start the game. You're turning the ball over twice. The defense ain't going to be able to hold them out of the end zone. Though this is a team that was the best in the red zone offense, uh, best red zone offense in the league. And it was only a matter of time before they started scoring on us. Um the blame goes all over the place. I also, and Patrick Graham's done such a good job. I had a hard time understanding why they didn't blitz Kyler Murray. You weren't getting there four guys. I said it a bunch of times, if you're going to get Kyler Murray, you have to go right at him. You can't let him make plays with his legs. He made plays with his legs. Not only was he running for first downs, he was elusive in the pocket. He got out of a lot of sacks and he was able to, you know, make plays with his arm on the run, made plays with his legs. You have to go after Kyler Murray and you have to hit him. And we could not do that. They never brought, the one time they did bring pressure, they actually got there and he had to throw the ball away. Um, the couple times that they brought pressure, they got there. They should have done it more, to be honest. But this game, it was it, to me, special teams is bad. Coaching was bad. Quarterback was really bad. Defense did what they could. I just think they got tired in the second half. I'm not going to put a ton of blame on them. I thought that the opening drive of the second half was their worst moment. They really needed to get a three and out or at least get the ball back, not give up points. They let Arizona go right down and score. Now, we did combat that or we did answer that with a score of our own. Made it 20 to 7, but we never got closer than that. Uh, the offense has a lot left to be desired. There, there's no doubt about that. Daniel Jones, is he a future quarterback? Maybe not. You know, I'm not, listen, I'm not, I don't believe in him. I, I'll be completely honest. I don't believe, I don't believe that that guy can win games. I just don't. Um, I say all the time, when, I, when I'm sitting here saying Daniel Jones just can't turn the ball over, that tells you what I think of him as a quarterback. If I'm telling you that Daniel Jones needs to win the games for us, then I would think much more highly of him. I'm telling you that in order for us to win games, he just can't turn the ball over and has to be smart. It tells you I don't believe in him as a thrower. That, that's for sure. And if his, if his legs are hurt and he, a big part of his game is running and mobility, he's got nothing. You, you saw that today. You see that every game. I understand why Giants fans are giving up on him. He hasn't thrown a touchdown in five weeks, four weeks, whatever it has been. It's been a long time. And uh, we run, we won these games with running the ball and playing defense and just didn't run the ball today. I don't understand Jason Garrett's play calling. I go right back to the, the one play there when we actually made it 20 to seven, we did have the ball deep in our own territory, but you, you pass. So you throw a one yard tight window pass on first down. I don't understand that throw at all. It's going nowhere. Even if you complete it, it's dangerous. It's very high risk, low reward. You run the ball next time for nine yards. Should have ran it on first down. Third down and one. Then Deion Jones throws a, a freaking fade pattern down the sideline, 30 yards down. I'm the, When there's blanket coverage, just a very low percentage throw. Giants just everything that they could have done wrong today, they did wrong. There's nothing to take out of this. The only redeeming quality was the goal line stand that they had when Arizona recovered the fumble. Marcus Golden killed us. Everybody killed us. We got beat everywhere today. There, again, there's not, nothing redeeming out of this. You take it. You have to learn from this. You got humbled a little bit as a young team. Maybe they did feel themselves a little bit too much coming off of Seattle. I don't think Judge would let that happen. But this was definitely uh, the worst game the Giants have played since week three. And if they play like this, I don't care who's left on our schedule, they're not going to win any games. So they've got to tighten this back up. they got to get back to work. they got to put this behind it but not forget about it. they got to improve upon it. they got to figure this out. And they got to move forward. They got a very tough Cleveland Browns team coming in here on Sunday night, and the Giants are going to have to find a way to play better. The Giants got to find a way to be in this game at the end because if they don't, they're going to find themselves in the same situation they were in today. Andrew Thomas got embarrassed today. He's going against Miles Garrett. The New York Giants are going to have to find a way to give him help. I don't like that matchup whatsoever. I don't know what happened with the regression today. This team just they, they took a step back today, and hopefully they can get that step back next week. Even if the Giants would have lost a close game to Arizona um, and played well, you could deal with it. But like I said, the, today's game, nothing good to take of it. It's in, it's disappointing. Uh, I'm not mad. I, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in the way they. I'm not disappointed that they lost. I'm disappointed in the way they played today. Uh, I'm just very disappointed in it. 
Giants are five and eight, kind of where I thought they would be this year. Again, I've said this a million times, five and eight. I figured we'd be four games out or three games out, no chance to win the division. And this is probably where I thought it would be. The fact that we're in the division because it's so bad makes it that much more emotional. Um, but I'm disappointed because I thought they'd put up a better fight. And congratulations to the Cardinals fans. You guys whooped our ass. And, uh, you know, good luck the rest of the year. Kyler Murray's a star. I love that kid. He's exciting to watch. And, you know, he's going to be a really good quarterback for years to come. I wish we had a guy that I could sit there and say that about, you know, taking the balls uh, from center, you know, being under center for us for the next few years. But I don't see that in Daniel Jones. Anyway, I've talked way too long, grown on 11 minutes, served a long video. Bad game for the Giants. Just, you know, got to try to press on. You got Cleveland next week. Got to play a lot better. Learn from your mistakes. Figure it out. Make adjustments. And don't turn the damn ball over and run the damn ball. Pretty simple. That's how we won. I don't know where that was today. So all I got, guys. It's a bad day to dizzle. I'm going to go watch. I'm going to go eat. I'm going to watch these uh, Eagles and uh, Washington play and move for help. Till then, it's a bad day to dizzle and I'm out. Peace.